Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Today I'd like to show you how to set up automated tests for your R package. While I have made several videos about creating R packages before, which you're welcome to check out, this video is somehow self-contained because we'll start from scratch and create a new package and set up a minimal testing environment for automated testing. So let's start. We go, we do it in our studio, of course. I go to a new project and create a new directory and create a new R package using DevTools. This is a nice way to start a um, very convenient basic structure. So I call it min-max because we'll have a very simple function that calculates the minimum and maximum as an, as an input from an input. Sorry. So you see that when I start this package, a lot of text is displayed in the console. We couldn't read very much of it because it was so quickly set up. And now we've got a basic package structure. Um, and what is new here is next to environment history and connections, we have a build tab with special menu options for a package. We'll use the DevTools package. I call library DevTools, which also loads the use this package. And now we um, write a simple function and I just call it minmax to calculate the minimum and maximum of an input. So when I use the use this function use r and the name of the script minmax, it sets up the environment for me. So we have this folder r and that script minmax is in there. But as you see here in the top left, the script is empty at this point. So let's write the function. I'm writing a function minmax, function x, and it's supposed to calculate the minimum and the maximum of an input value or input vector. And we label the result, and we do it as simple as this. And now, Note that when I work in a package, I don't want to run this code to have the function as an object in my environment, but that's not good practice when creating an R package, but rather I will load the function. There's this build more load all menu entry, but I can also use Control Shift and L in Windows. So I'll do that, Control Shift and L, um, and then I can use the minmax function. I'm down here in the console now in the bottom left, and I use it on the vector 1 to 10. And it gives me a labeled result, minimum 1, maximum 10. And now let's say we are developing software, and this is only a small function that is a helper function that is used in other functions. And we need to make sure that this function doesn't get messed around with because there are downstream dependencies on this function. And let's say one of these dependencies is that this function um, returns a vector length 2. So we want to test that. So how can we set up a testing environment? Of course, we could test manually. And as Hadley nicely says in his book, R Packages, that he wrote together with Jenny Bryan, the second edition. So you're um, invited to read that book. It's available online for free if you don't want to buy it. Um, a book about R Packages, he says somewhere, the problem is not that people don't test their code. R developers usually do test their code, but not in a systematic way. So we want to change that now. And, and test this function in a systematic way so that the test can get run automatically as we develop our package. So I write in the console use test that, which is a function from the use this package that we loaded alongside DevTools. So I do that in the console and you see the use this package is quite chatty. It tells us what it did. So we have a new um, folder that we can see under files. It's called tests. We also had some changes to the description that we will neglect for now, but test that was added there. So I have this test subfolder and this test subfolder has another subfolder inside test that that is empty at the moment. And at the top we have that test set that dot R script um, that sets up the testing environment um, to run all the tests that depend um, that belong to this package. But this is empty at the moment. We have not defined any tests yet. We have just set up the testing environment. So now um, I'll just call use test. And I can even use it without arguments because I have that minmax script open. So 
Um, this is recognized automatically. I just write use test and you see I don't even need to provide parameters and I get a script that is called test minmax.r. So this is the structure. We have a function called minmax and the um, associated test script is called test-minmax.r. So we're in that file now and it's got um, a dummy example, multiplication works, expect equal, and we'll change that of course, but we have a nice starting point. So um, for now I want to test if my minmax function always returns a vector length 2. So let's do that. Um, and we have a function that we can use here. The test that functions usually start with expect underscore and when you load the test that package explicitly, which is recommended, you can use the context menu. I'm down in the console now and you see that I type question mark expect and then it shows me all the functions that start with ex expect underscore. So there are a lot of functions that expect certain types of results um, that we can choose from. And here we'll use the expect length function, which says, does code return a vector with a specified length? So that's what we want to use here, expect length. I write that function and I can say min max 1 to 10 and the result shall be of length 2. So I save the file, I load my functions using Control shift l and now under build more we can test the package. There's also a shortcut for that, Control shift t um, but I can also call that from the menu build more test package. So let's do that. The tests are run and you see the output is quite minimal. It says the function is loaded and tested. There was one test and it was successful. Okay. Um, so no problem here. And now let's say uh, we want to change our function to see if this test really works. Um, so let's say somebody else on our team says, um, wouldn't it be nice to also get back um, maybe the median. Minimum, maximum and median would be nice to have. So let's add that to our function. Median equals median x. I save the file. I call Control shift l to load the function and then Control shift and t to test the package. The test is run again and now um, the test shows me that um, there was a failure. Min max returns a vector length 2. Min max 1 to 10 has length, length 3, not length 2. So I can test my function in the console. Min max 1 to 10 and it returns minimum, maximum, median. But we decided in our specifications for this in-house function it must always return a vector length 2 and if I just um, thoughtlessly extend the function then um, I may break subsequent code. So this automated test reminds me of that and it shows me immediately this condition that we need to have fulfilled for some down downstream reasons is not met anymore. It does not return a vector length 2 anymore. So this will break subsequent code. So I undo this change. Um, so we saw already now um, this works. But let's do one more example um, and let's think for a moment about missing values. Um, what if I use the function, I'm down in the console again, um, with values 1 to 3 and an NA. Then my min max function will also return NA. What if I wanted to say NA dot or M equals true like I can do in base R when I use minimum and maximum directly? This doesn't work because my function doesn't allow for an argument NA or M equals true. So let's allow the user to use an additional argument and we can use a trick. Um, of course we could specify an argument NA dot RM but maybe um, we want to allow for other arguments as well so we can use this trick the dot 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 shortcut to pass on additional arguments. We need to make that a function argument and we also need to pass the dots to the functions in the function body, the min and max functions. So I'm doing that. 
I can check the script again I can load the function again oh, I made a mistake I, I ran the code um, so I don't want the function to be defined in the global environment and this is very nice here that I get a warning message already so um, so I shouldn't have the function in my global environment um, but I can load the function and now let's try it again min max and I now I can provide this argument na.rm equals true and it gets accepted and I get a valid result and if I exclude that argument na.rm equals true I get na's back again. So let's say um, we use this extended version that allows the user to pass additional arguments to the functions in the function body but we want to make sure that the default is always strict so that if there are na values the function should return na. We don't want that to be overwritten. Let's say this is a second um, choice that we made in our specifications and we want to make sure that this design choice is respected and not changed subsequently. So we can write another test, test that again and I call the test min max returns na if input contains na. So I would write it like this and the function that we can use here is expect equal and we can say min max I used the example that I used before I made a typo min max c123 and na is equal to c and a and a two and a shall be returned and let's see if that works out I expect the function to return two and a values when I call the function with an input that contains an a so let's see if that works um, I just saved that file again and I can call control shift t or build more test to run the tests again and we see we get a failed test. The test was not successful. Why was it not successful? Um, so the test that package tells me min max returns na if input contains na. But actual and expected are not equal. What is the difference? Well, we see we need to take more care of our na values. Actual is an integer vector and expected is a logical vector. So um, we get a very meaningful output here. Um, so this is very helpful in the test that package. The Waldo package is used in the background for meaningful output um, when comparisons are made, object comparisons. Um, so NAs are treated as logical, so we have to make them explicit NA integer. So I'm doing that now. See this is really helpful here with the output we get. So um, I changed that and I run the test again. And let's see one more problem um, the test fails again and again we get a very meaningful output um, the actual output is a character vector um, min max the, the names um, of the actual output are a character vector min max um, whereas the expected output does not have names. So um, you see in the console here I named the output. Um, the NAs are labeled min and max and in my test I did not specify that. So I have to add that here min and max the names um, of the output. I add that to my testing function and now let's run the, run the test one more time. Control shift t or build more test and now you see the test is passed. I get minimum output, I just see that two tests were passed so, so my function works as expected. And now let's say this has been defined early on in the project and now we keep working on it and at some point one of my colleagues says okay this is a bit tedious, we have a lot of inputs with na values um, and I'm really not fond of that um, so um, I want to hard code 
the treatment of missing values. So I replace these three dots with an explicit na.rm equals true. Um, so I do that in the function so that um, missings are removed and we always get a valid result. I make this change, I save the script, I call control shift l to load the function again. I could also use build more load all. Um, and now let's run the tests again. Control shift t or build more test. Um, and now I get um, a test failure again. So the test picks up the change. Min max returns an A if input contains an A. This is not true anymore. The actual output is 1, 3, and the expected output would be an A, an A. So this way I can make sure that my function isn't just changed and I forget that this change was not allowed because we decided in the specifications for our software de development project that um, this was not supposed to happen. So if I forget about this, um, test that reminds me of this, then I can always test my package um, before I build it or, or automate this completely. So um, I don't forget to test this, but the coded test automates this. So I can return that, um, repair the function again, and replace the n, n a dot r n equals true with the three dots again. Return to the previous state. I save the function again. I call load all, control shift l, and then test all. I can do it once from this menu, build more, test package, run the tests again, and you see the function is repaired and it behaves exactly now as expected. So that was a quick introduction to automating tests of your functions in your R package using the test that package. To find out more, um, the test that package is quite well documented. Um, so you can type help package equals test that. Maybe not all of you are familiar with this way of getting help. You get to this overview page and there's a link to user guides, package vignettes, and other documentation. And we see that we are lucky here. The test that package contains several vignettes. Um, so that's a great way to learn more about the package. Also, the R package is booked by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan that you can access online for free. Contains a chapter on testing that I can recommend to read. That was it for today. I hope you liked it. If you found this helpful and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. All the best for your own data analysis, your R project, and especially your packages. See you next time. Ciao.